Okay, today we're gonna laser cut with Inkscape, so let's open Inkscape. The first thing we're gonna do is go to Document Properties and set our material size. In this case, it's going to be 100 by 100 millimeters. Today we're just doing the letter E, so let's draw and set the font. We will be using Cooper Black for this job. Let's resize this and the little lock icon up at the top is to lock the aspect ratio so we don't skew when resizing. Then we'll open the align and distribute toolbox and we will center this on the page in both the vertical and horizontal directions. Let's finish our resize. This time I'm holding the shift key so it resizes from the center and give us our final size. Now we're gonna hit object to path and this will create a path around our object. We're gonna change our view to outline as it makes this a little bit easier to see. Let's create our toolpath with the path to G-code extension. In the preferences tab, we can define the name we want for the file and the location that we want for our file to be created. We'll click apply and make our G-code. Here's our toolpath and I'll show you why we like the outline view. Let's open our file and do some manual edits. Inkscape automatically creates some G-code for the start file. Keep it or replace it however you like. The G0, Z5 call is to bring the tool up, and in this case we want to turn the laser off. This code will be different depending on which kind of electronics you have and what firmware you're using. I'll also note that if you're using Marlin, you'll want to make an M400 call before every laser call. This will finish all the moves before changing the state of the laser. Without this, the laser will turn on or off as soon as this code enters the buffer. We also want to change all the lines where we call the tool head to penetrate into the workpiece and replace them with the code used to turn on the laser. And finally, we will make some end G code. At this point, I'd like to point out a small error I made in not removing all the calls to Z. There are no Z movements in this operation, so therefore are not needed. And depending on how you set up your offsets, it's likely that it wouldn't have mattered anyways. Let's open this in a viewer and see. You can see here how the tool will move along the path. And finally, with laser cutting, you may need to take additional passes to make it all the way through the material. And that's just as easy as copy pasting the code that's used to cut and just making more copies, as many as you need. At this point, we should be ready to go. Let's load it in our machine and see what we get. Mm -hmm. 